Hey guys, it's Courtney with the Leviathan Snakes along with Quinn, our pastel clown female ball python. And today we are going to be talking about recessive mutations in ball pythons. I picked Miss Quinn because she is such a beautiful example of a pastel clown and clown is a very popular recessive mutation in ball pythons. Um, in today's video, we're going to be discussing different recessive genes as well as what it means to be a recessive gene and the terminology that goes around um, recessives, <laughs> just to give you a better understanding of what these things mean as a part of our ball python breeder starter guide series that we're gonna be doing. So this video is for folks who are a little confused about what uh, genes are recessive, what it means to be recessive, uh, what it means to be heterozygous, het, possible het. Um, hopefully it's just some good information for people who are still wrapping their head around the genetics and um, who want to see some pretty snakes. So let's get started. All right, there are a lot of recessive morphs in ball pythons. When I say morph, that is the visual um, distortion of pattern and color in a ball python. So it's what genes make up these beautiful colors and patterns that we see on the animals. Um, and some examples of recessive traits in ball pythons specifically would be genes such as an albino, an azanthic, clown, pied, or piebald, however you say it. Uh, both candy and toffee, which are the same gene with different names. Um, sunset, for example. I know if you've been on our channel, Steven's talked about sunset quite a bit. And then there are other genes like desert ghost, rainbow. There's so many. There are recess recessive genes in any animal or plant even. Um, like for example, humans might have blue eyes. You know that if you took a <laughs> sixth grade um, science that if somebody has blue eyes, that means both of their parents, their biological parents, have to be a carrier for blue eyes. They might, might not have those blue eyes themselves, but unless they both carry that gene, um, you cannot have a child with blue eyes. It's very similar for ball pythons. You need to be a carrier of the trait for it to display in the offspring. So what that means is that Quinn here, who is a visual clown, and I'll get out another visual clown as an example, um, she carries two copies of the clown trait. Uh, she also has pastel, which is different. We're not gonna talk about that today, but this is not what every um, just base clown looks like. Our base clown male, who's a really good example, is actually locked right now, so I can't pull him out. But I do have a uh, visual clown female. Pennywise, who I will pull out next. All right, so Pennywise here, as you can see, has the same pattern. She has different coloration because she doesn't have that pastel. This is just a base clown female. She also carries two copies of the clown trait. And I keep saying two copies um, because what I mean is that when a parent passes on a recessive gene, a visual parent will pass on one copy of that gene to their offspring. So you need one copy from each parent to produce a visual offspring. So I'm gonna use this whiteboard to give you guys a visual representation. What I have here is I'm going to put the genes that mom has and the genes that dad has in these boxes and then give you four examples of the offspring that they could produce together. I'm gonna to use pied as an example, but this goes for albinos, uh, clowns, azanthics, desert ghosts, sunset, ghost, hypo, all of those recessive genes. So if we had a visual pied female and a visual pied male, each parent will give off one of these genes to each of their eggs. So no matter what, mom is going to give a pied gene to each egg, and no matter what, dad is going to give a pied gene to each egg. So in this case, 100% of the eggs will have the visual appearance of piebald. For example, lemon. For all intents and purposes, this is a normal ball python. This is a wild type ball python that has 
no visual morphs, no visual pattern change or color um, mutations. However, this is a carrier for a recessive gene. So th this is a het. This is a heterozygous carrier of albino. So this little ball python's um, dam or mother is really wiggly <laughs> and big. Miss Delilah, our albino ball python. So how did this girl produce this girl? And it's easy. Her sire or father did not carry the albino trait, or if he did, he did not pass it along to her. So in this case, mom has two copies of the piebald gene, and she looks like Lemon, who we just showed you. Dad carries the piebald gene, but he does not visually represent it. For example, he looks like a normal wild type ball python. In this case, mom is going to give the piebald gene to 100% of her eggs, but dad is only going to give it to 50% of his eggs. So he doesn't give it here, but he gives it here and here, but we get another X over here. So in this case, 50% of the offspring should be a visual representation of piebald and 100% of the offspring will be heterozygous for, ball pie, uh, for piebald. So we will have a mix of both visual pieds, the double piece, as well as wild type pet pieds. How can a snake like this produce a snake that looks like this? And the answer is you can pair this girl to a male who carries the albino trait recessively or visually. So she has a 50% chance of giving um, a copy of albino to any of her offspring. So if you have uh, six eggs from her, uh, probability wise, three of those eggs will get the albino trait from her. The probability is actually per egg, so it doesn't really break down that easily, but each egg has a 50% chance of carrying the albino trait from her. If you pair her to a visual albino, 100% of a visual albino's offspring will carry the albino trait. So it's really up to her at that point. <laughs> but if you pair her to another het, another recessive normal wild type ball python with the albino gene, you okay? Each of those offspring have a 50% chance of receiving the albino trait from both parents. So you have a chance for each egg that they get one copy, two copies, or no copies at all. And when they all look like this, you don't know which of those snakes carry albino and which ones do not. The only ones that you will be sure of will be the visuals. In this case, mom is only going to give the piebald gene to 50% of her offspring. So for example, this baby might get it, and this baby might get it, but these two do not carry any piebald traits from mom. Exactly the same way, dad is only going to give his piebald trait to 50% of his offspring. So maybe he gives nothing here, but he gives one trait here, nothing here, and one trait here. So this is a lot different than what we've been looking at in the past where everything had a chance um, a hundred percent of the offspring was at least heterozygous for ball, for piebald. In this case, we have two hets, one visual, and one snake that carries no copies of the piebald trait. So in this case, we have one visual piebald ball python, which will be very easy to tell due to the color and pattern difference. However, we do have two het pieds and one wild type with no copies, no heterozygous copies of the piebald gene. All three of these snakes will look exactly the same, but unfortunately you cannot tell which of these two snakes is a carrier for piebald. They both look 
the same, they're both wild types. So in this case, when you have head to head pairings, your visuals are still visuals, but all of your normal looking ball pythons will be 66% het pieds. So they have a 66% chance of being heterozygous for the piebald gene. So because of that, we have possible hets. We have 50% or 66% possible het. And a 50% would mean I paired this girl to a boy with no het albino in him. So that egg only has a 50% chance of carrying an albino trait. So in the case that you have a het to a non-carrier of a recessive gene, you are going to get what's called 50% possible het animals. So mom is going to give that piebald trait to half of her offspring and nothing to the other half. Dad is not going to give that trait to any of his offspring. So in this case, each egg has a 50% chance of carrying the piebald trait, but all four of these animals will look exactly the same like a normal wild type ball python. These are 50% chance possible heads. This beautiful girl is Miss Fiona, and she is someone that we produced last season by pairing a het to visual combination. She is a banana blade het clown, I'm sorry, a banana blade clown. Um, that is because her father was a visual clown male. His only visual gene was clown. He looked like Miss Pennywise, who I showed earlier, and his mom, uh, her mom, is a banana blade het clown. So she did not have a 100% chance of getting the clown mutation. And there were a couple in her clutch that were not visual clowns, they were all head clowns. So in this case, mom is still a visual piebald, but dad has no, is not a carrier for the piebald gene at all. Once again, mom is going to give 100% of her offspring one copy of the piebald gene. Dad, however, is not going to give that gene to any of his offspring. In this case, 100% of your offspring will look like normal wild type ball pythons, but they will all be a carrier for the piebald gene. Once you start adding in other genes, that clown mutation really looks very different. Um, banana is a very uh, visually aggressive <laughs> mutation. Uh, it really changes the appearance of the animals with that bright color. So um, this doesn't look anything like those clowns I showed you earlier, but she is a clown. Um, and let me show you some more. Another recessive trait would be a piebald or a pied ball python, such as Miss Lemon right here. She is a single gene piebald ball python. And pieds are recognized by these white breaks in their pattern. Um, it is also a pattern distorting gene, um, but it is just partial leucism in the snake. So leucism is a lack of all pigment, such as whoop, <laughs> this boy right here, Louie. Louie is not a recessive, uh, uh, the leucism in Louie is not a recessive trait. It is an allelic uh, result, or it is a result of an allelic pairing that washes out all his pigment pattern. Whereas here, we just have that partial leucism. And so um, a lot of people will get like albinism and leucism mixed up. Um, and it's interesting to know that piebald is explained as partial leucism. Another very interesting example would be a sunset ball python. So this is a visual sunset and this is a het sunset. So this girl only carries one copy of the sunset trait. This boy carries two copies and he displays it visually. So these two have been pairing and that means each egg that she produces will have a 50% chance of being a visual sunset. That is really exciting for us. We cannot wait to produce some babies that look like him, but we wouldn't mind some babies that also look like her because all of them, since they were a pair, will carry his trait recessively. 
So one more recessive that we're gonna talk about is one that can be a little more complicated because it has a lot of lines that are not compatible. So in ball pythons, the Azanthic is this pretty black and gray snake. Brightening genes such as pastel and fire will really lighten up these brownish gray colors. So they are absolutely stunning black and white animals. When I talked about the different lines of Azanthic, there is Jolif, TSK, VPI and MJ lines, and none of those lines are compatible with one another. So this is a VPI Xanthic. If I were to pair this visual VPI Xanthic to a visual TSK Xanthic, all of their offspring would be wild type het VPI Xanthic, het TSK Xanthic. And they would have to be paired with other snakes with either VPI and or TSK to um, produce visual offspring. The last thing that I'm going to talk about today is special recessives. Special recessives are recessive traits that when compared to, uh, I'm sorry, when paired to other recessives, specific recessives, uh, show visually, even though you only have one copy of each trait, they combine and they make a visual appearance. So this boy right here is a visual toffee. He's a single gene, Visual, the only trait he carries is toffee. He carries two copies of the toffee trait. It's also known as candy, if that makes more sense to you to think of him as a candy. Um, and this girl, as you saw earlier, is an albino. So she carries copies, two copies of albino. So two copies of toffee, two copies of albino. When we pair them together, they will make visual animals all of their offspring will have visual pattern and color mutations <clears throat> that we call candino or toffino. Uh, another example of this would be cryptic and clown making kryptons. These genes are compatible even though they are not the same gene. Uh, they don't have the same color mutation, they don't have the same pattern mutation, but they work together on the allele and they make visual babies. So this is another pairing that we are doing this year. We're gonna make some visual toffinos out of them. And because a toffino carries one trait from your visual male and one trait from your visual female, uh, they carry one copy, they do carry one copy of each. So they have a, they are head albino, head toffee. And if you were to pair a toffino to a toffino, uh, you could get visual toffees, visual albinos, and more toffinos because you don't know which trait they're going to get from which parent and um, they will get one trait from each parent no matter what. So that is another thing that is a little more confusing but it is very interesting. So if you were to pair a Tofino to a normal ball python or a Krypton, which is one copy of Clown, one copy of Cryptic, if you were to pair either of those to a normal ball python, you wouldn't actually know which gene they were heterozygous for. Um, you would know that they were heterozygous for either clown krypton or albino toffee, but you wouldn't know which one they carried until you paired them. I hope you enjoyed learning about and just seeing all these examples of some beautiful recessive animals such as Ribbon, who is a uh, Enchi Blade clown, which is a recessive trait. Um, we really hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. If you have any additional questions or something is unclear to you, please feel free to ask in the comments. Um, it, I am not a science teacher. I'm not a teacher at all. <laughs> so if you have any additional questions, not only can we answer them, but a lot of our other subscribers are very knowledgeable on the subject. So ask as many questions as you want. We can even go more in depth in a later video if there are a lot of questions. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, hope this video was helpful to you. Let us know in the comments below. Have a great day and we will see you next time.